We'll hear from the appellant. You have 10 minutes. May it please the court, good morning. My name is John Parrish and I represent Natalia Pacina. Um, I'm tempted to reserve a minute, but I don't think I need one. Um, this is a case- Not about, unless you want to rebut yourself. Well, <laughs> that was the temptation. Yeah. <laughs> um, your honors, this is a case uh, in the civil arena concerning service of process, but also due process. Effectively in this case, which is one of a number of foreclosure cases that have been addressed by the lower courts in the third district court of appeal and the lower courts below that. This is an, a, a publication case where effectively there were only three attempts of service upon the individual. Each time, one, one particular address each time. Yes, a different address each time. In fact, the first address that service was attempted to was an address that was known by the plaintiff to be wrong because the plaintiff had actually served her, among other things, at the correct address with the same lawsuit that it had previously dismissed before and indeed using one of the very same process serving individuals to do that. How much time had passed since the first, between the first lawsuit service and the second lawsuit service, how much time? Three years? A little more than three? Approximately three to four years. So how did they know when they served the second time that she hadn't moved to another location? You said they knew it was wrong. How did they know it was wrong at the time that they served it or tried to serve it? How did they know? They know because her address on her driver's license is published and says it. They know that she's published in the DBPR's webpage as her, with the exact correct address where she should have been served. And certainly that was before. the last known address that Pardon? they, certainly that was the last known address that they had. Last known address and in fact correct address. She still, res, she still resides there and indeed I should add something else. That in this case there was a kind of deception that occurred that, that really prejudiced the case even more than this original period of service because as the court is aware, a notice of action is, filed, is served by the clerk of courts based upon a determination in the, I think it's the affidavit that, that seeks that notice of action. And they didn't action. include any address in that. They didn't include any address. So the clerk couldn't even send a notice to a, an address, much less all three addresses. Precisely, I mean this case here, if we take Florida statutes annotated, and we look at all of the annotations for why due process hasn't been served, has an element of almost every single one. In this case, you have perhaps 11 or 12 different independently sufficient reasons that this would not merit service by publication. Well, and if they did, the worst part is that there wasn't even an evidentiary hearing that we could rely on to to be able to understand why the trial court ruled the way it did. And was requested. I, I personally filed the motion to dismiss. I personally requested an additional hearing, as the court is well aware, because I believe that in this case, the effort that was maintained and the things that were said bordered upon fraud. I mean, there is no question that in the affidavit of diligent search and inquiry, which should have been used in order to serve her personally, not as an afterthought when three attempts at the wrong place were not done. It says in it, for example, that a search of the DBPR website doesn't turn her up. A search of the DBPR website turns her up. She's been a registered real estate broker for, since 2004. And, and then the affidavit actually has a misleading statement in it which says, that we conducted a Google search, which was really effectively unavailing at the time. If you place this woman's name in Google, you come up with 55 pages and 13,700 hits. The first three pages of Google, or four pages of Google, are nothing but her, nothing but her at her correct address, and nothing but her with her business address, which they never attempt to serve at all. Now, I go through these hearings <clears throat> every day down in Dade County or in my county in Collier County, and I see the press that has been placed upon the system. But in this case, when I went to have this motion heard by the, the lower court, it was on a case, a docket, where there were 30 trials set for effectively one single day. I was left until last. 
and I made the arguments that I'm making now with the case authority and with the memorandum. And I understand that there is a press. <clears throat> and I understand the difficulty with, with these cases in the system. But in this case, due process is so clearly not served by publishing that it's, it's to me, as, as, a, as a lawyer, difficult to understand. I mean, publication is a substitute for real personal service in the state. And in this case, it's not to be used as a substitute for convenience. In fact, all of the cases that are cited in the brief indicate that we're only to use publication when the person cannot be found. When we cannot effectuate personal service, it is an alternate of last resort to be met with a strict compliance test and all the other tests that are cited in the brief. And in this case, it appears to me that counsel and the investigator that were associated with this case could have solved this problem when they got the initial motion, knowing that this is a situation where service was not properly Are effective. you suggesting we should uh, remand with directions to grant the motion or to hold an evidentiary hearing on the issue? I'm suggesting you should do both. The motion should well, be... We, we don't need an evidentiary hearing if we're directing the trial court to grant the motion to dismiss, do we? My, my mistake. I don't, I don't necessarily imply an evidentiary hearing with respect to whether to grant the motion. I think the motion should be granted on its face. I requested an evidentiary hearing on the fraud, and I do believe that it should be remanded on that basis. However, we have a problem, I think, on that. In all honesty and candor, this judgment, there, there is no jurisdiction. According to the case law, the failure to serve process properly in this context just basically means this court, no court, has jurisdiction to enter the judgment. And well, as such, that, that, I'm not that, certain. That, that assumes we go that far. If we reverse and remand for an evidentiary hearing, that's a whole different matter. It would be a different matter, but I would suggest that that would not be necessary in this case because these facts are effectively unopposed from the motion to dismiss. They were represented by counsel, and counsel did not object to the entry of any of this information. In fact, much of it was submitted by that counsel for that hearing. I and mean, in, there's in a the, dispute about the Google search. Yes, but it's insufficient. I mean, the Google search is merely... Is the Google search significant? Can we just ignore your claim about the Google search? Well, you could I mean, ignore... You know, they, they, I mean, there seems to be a disputed issue about the Google search, at the very least. I, I don't know what it is, but it perhaps has to do with whether the entire 13,700 entries all apply to her. I'm not sure that makes any difference. The point is, is not that never The was. difference is they're trying to find, I mean, you know, they checked the tax records. They they went to her last. They went to I guess where she lives, and she and they were told she doesn't live there anymore. Um, That's what the affidavit says. They called her telephone numbers and left messages asking her to contact them. Well, you know, there's a series of things according to the affidavit. Now, if you're I don't know if you're challenging the truth of the affidavit. Well, let me let me yeah. take your points in and show you, in my view, why they would be wrong. If all of those were true, if you accept that that actually occurred, it would merit that you would have to serve her personally because you would know by virtue of all of those statements, including your own researches, that she was not outside the jurisdiction, that she was in the state. Because every one of those records that you mentioned in that affidavit shows she was there. Wait, just uh, hold on now. They went to, uh, she lives at... You're, you're telling us that she currently resides at? It's 3901 South Ocean Drive, apartment 6N. 3901 Ocean Drive, apartment what? 6N. <clears throat> 6N. They tried to serve her at 3901 South Ocean Drive, I guess, Penthouse C. They, they tried <clears throat> to serve her at 10 o'clock in the morning. And after they, according to them, and if we accept their evidence is true, they went down and talked to a security guard named Kadisha. And Kadisha told them that she doesn't live there anymore. She lives in Boca Raton. They didn't check the office manager, and they didn't check Boca Raton after that. In fact, there is no investigation whatsoever of Boca Raton. But if you, again, accept what they're saying in their own affidavit is true, 
that they searched well, the drivers. Well, they, it looks like they went to 3901 South Ocean Drive twice. They did. But this is a high rise in the first. But, but you're saying she lives there, but the guard said she doesn't live there? The, according to the affidavit, they, they talked to a security guard, 21 year old. Is that, black do female. you accept that as true, or are you challenging that? <clears throat> if I were in an evidentiary hearing, I would suggest that, that it's not really relevant what Kadisha says, because he effectively you also have, nor what anyone says. I mean, you have an office manager there, though, and, and you have a condo association. So you're saying they didn't act with diligence, even if a security guard, whose job it, it is, doesn't include determining who lives where and when, Whose diligence would have required them yeah. to make further inquiry with the office itself. Which they did in both of the other service of process attempts. If you look, they checked with the office management. And in the case of the non-existent, and this is where I think something's not right, because in the case of the second visit to that address, they say they went to penthouse C, there is no penthouse C, and more to the point, they say they checked with the office management who told them that a different person lives in penthouse C, but nobody lives there because there is no penthouse C. So it, it points to the implication that the affidavit isn't quite crafted with, all, with, with, with accuracy, but they still point out the important part which is, if you're going to check to see who's in the condo, at least check with the manager. Don't check with Kadisha, the 21-year-old security guard, who tells you she thinks she's off in Boca somewhere. Well, was the manager available? Doesn't we don't say. Know. Doesn't say. Okay, if you'll bring your argument to a close. Um, in short, Your Honors, my, my request is that the court effectively, I think the law says that in this case, and, and with these facts, which are effectively undisputed, that the matter should be dismissed. Um, that the effective, there is no jurisdiction of this court if process wasn't made properly. And I did think the court below considered all of the things that you all are looking at now and basically ruled the other way. I don't think that was appropriate under the circumstance. Even if you take everything they say at, their, at the best possible light you can, the case law says it does not warrant service by publication which is not an alternative form of service of convenience. It is when, you, when there's no other ability out there. And with my final point, I want to say that effectively, you know, this statute only mandates the allowance of that when the person is reasonably believed not to be within this jurisdiction to have it done. In fact, the Shepherd case is someone in England. In fact, here, all of the efforts they undertook and published to the court. And in conclusion, you ask us to reverse, right? Yes, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.